Hey guys, it's Talia. Today is Sunday, July 30th. And I only have a couple whips to show. I have some new acquisitions to show you guys. And hopefully not tread down too many rabbit holes along the way. Um, because this is my actually my second take of doing this video. First, first time I just... I got off of my own thing. And yes, I have had coffee. It's uh, about quarter after eight right now in the morning. And I'm in my living room, obviously. But I've actually been up for a couple of hours now. Probably almost three hours. <sighs> Blame the fur balls. They wake me up. Um, so, hold on. I talked so much in my last video. I needed a drink. My mouth is so dry right now. Yes, I have had coffee. I had about half a cup, basically. Um, but do you ever just get up some mornings, as an avid coffee drinker, do you ever just get up some mornings and just don't feel like coffee? Like, you know you need it. But in some way in your mind, you're just really not in the mood for coffee. So you try to drink it anyway. So, I did have a little bit of coffee, but this is just, obviously, it's water with flavoring added. To get something like orange tangerine or something. And, so let me just go ahead and get into my whips. And try not to ramble too much. The last... You've actually already seen my progress on this. If you watched my Year of Whips video on Tuesday, you've already seen it. I haven't done anything else on it since then. Um, let show you the picture again. This is... Okay, oh, something just popped in my feet. Um, this Brooks Books Spirit of Joy. Um... And again, so I've gotten done on her. I finished the stitches, like the actual cross stitches in her. Um, here in her dress, just kind of like baby pink, the cream color, um, the kind of really, really pale baby pink here. I finished off all the cross stitching, and yes, I actually went through and I found the 433 that I was able to do in her neck. And, as you can see, I had started on the beads, um, on Monday. Wasn't really feeling up to much cross-stitching anyway. And I had started on her beads. But, I felt like beading even less. So, I went back and started to work on her little accessories. I finished the dark teal in her in the in the butterfly the rest is beads and then I started on the big piece that covers like the little halo that comes out from behind her and then her wings and then her garland is a separate piece but that's how I far how far I got on that um like I said you've already seen this uh, when I did my year of whips piece on Tuesday The next thing I worked on, I didn't really get a chance to work on anything on Tuesday because I was running around a bit. A cat had a vet appointment. Then I went to Hobby Lobby. I'll tell you about that in a little bit. Um, but I worked on this on Wednesday while I was at the local store. Sarcasm. Um, this is another one that's in my year of whips. When I showed it on Tuesday, it kind of gave me a little bit of motivation to get it back out and actually do something on it. So I went through and I found some silks that I liked and then went on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday I frogged everything that was in there. Well, I frogged 
because I had I had done the A and part of the R before, and I went ahead and frogged that out, um, and then I frogged out the word because um, this is still the old um, the old thread. So, but I'll I'll pull that out when I get to that area when I get to that side. Um, and this is done. The red is. The red is Dinky Dye's Warata. Let's see that. Mm. Warata. Which is not like a bright red. It's kind of an orangey, mauvey red. Kind of an off red. And then this black, quote unquote black. Is um, Dinky Dye's Black Coral. I think it's number 130. It's not like a black, it's kind of a brownish, grayish black. Um, I actually just did this this morning, the BE. But I had done this Wednesday, and then part, I think I finished the R on Thursday. Oh, I knew what it was. Wednesday, I pulled out the SAR. Oh, sorry, the A and R, um, and then started stitching, and then Thursday I pulled out because, and I actually kind of nicked, I don't know if you know my little tell, I actually kind of nicked my fabric right there, um, I pulled out, got a little bit carried away, um, pulled out a couple of the threads, um, in the weave, but not to where it's like a whole hole. But it, the stitching is going to cover it anyway. So, that's where I got done with that. And I'm actually thinking, um, although it's not charted to be backstitched. God, I just went away. Um, though it's not charted to be backstitched, I'm thinking of backstitching the word sarcasm in that, um, that dark brownish black color that the rest of it's being done in. Um, and I had shared my progress on Stitch Mania and um, another lady commented and said you know she had done it and she showed uh, shared a picture of hers and her, her sarcasm was done in like a very bright um, I think it was like either yellow or lime green or something and she had actually backstitched it so um, but I told her, I was like, it's funny because I was actually debating on whether or not to backstitch the word sarcasm with this dark, um, dark color. And I might actually do that. I'm, I'm actually leaning more toward doing that. But we'll see. Probably gonna happen, but we'll see. Um, so yeah, that was it. I think that's probably what got, what took up a little bit of my time on Tuesday. I was doing all kinds of stuff on Tuesday. Mm. which is the reason why I didn't get much stitching done because I had the cat appointment does that mean the bed appointment um, went to Hobby Lobby and then when I did get home finally at the end of the day I'm going to leave this out because I'm probably going to work on it some more today or this morning um, and maybe even this evening when I get home um, but that appointment, Hobby Lobby, and, and then later on I had to get back out to the store, to Michael's, and, and then, but in between everything else, I was, um, hold on. That yeah, somebody wants to be up here. Of course. Um. I was like, I was going through my patterns. I was going through my patterns and trying to put together uh, something of a list uh, that I could kind of get in my mind what all I might want to do for Stitch Mania next year. 
because I'm actually thinking about doing all 15 days uh, in Stitch Mania next year instead of just the one per week. But I was doing that, I was um, getting the silks together, uh, we're trying to find the silks to do to replace in sarcasm. Um, I was just doing different things, like I wasn't really doing anything that required stitching. And then by the time I got done with all that, by the time I actually wanted to sit down and do anything, um, I didn't really get much much stitching done. So I will tell you that I did work a tiny bit. Um, as far as anything else that I worked on, I did work a tiny bit on Chester. I actually started Chester, but there's like a big square 900 square block of black and I only got maybe 20 stitches in to start like in the corner you don't need to see 20 stitches of black uh, maybe next time if I can get a little bit more like stitching on him done I'll show you my progress on it um, did get a little bit of stitching like a line of stitching on the 12th doctor because I was testing something out hold on <coughs> um yeah I'll see where do you think you're going um I did get like a line of stitching done on the 12th doctor because I was testing something out which I'm going to show you in a minute but it's progress that you're not really going to be able to tell that it's progress so I'll show it next time. You're gonna fall off if I let you go. Yeah, see? Why don't you get right there? He always wants to be right on my lap and I keep having to like push him like to the side of my lap. No, I did get a few stitches in on Chester and a few stitches in on a 12th Doctor, but you're not going to care about those few stitches. I'll show them next time. Um, hold on, I have notes here. Um, that, that, yeah. Um, I know, I know. Um, I did get in a few things. I said I went to Hobby Lobby on Tuesday. And the reason I went to Hobby Lobby is because everybody, I, I heard in several people's videos, um, And I had heard in, in several people's videos about finding clearance fabric or finding fabrics at Hobby Lobby in the clearance section, like the, the white shells and the Jobelins and stuff like that. The white guards, sorry, the white shells and the white guards and stuff like that. Um, so I went to Hobby Lobby to see if they had any, and I I went. And they didn't have any, um, but I did manage to pick up something. And I just thought they were the cutest thing. And let me find what I did with them. I just saw them. I just saw them. Yeah, yeah I just saw them. I saw these. And I just could not stop myself. Like, I just had to have them. Aren't these cute? They're cat scissors. And you can tell they're cat scissors and not butterflies. Because there's whiskers on them. See that? It has whiskers on it. How adorable is that? Look 
That's just, those are just so adorable. And I couldn't pass those up. I'm sorry. I just couldn't. So, I mean, they're, they're a tiny bit heavy, but not much. Not where it's going to make any difference, but it's just, just the cutest little, cutest little scissors. And they're shaped like cats. That is so cute. So I got those. Um, like I said, no clearance fabric, sorry. I, I would have checked the other Hobby Lobby down by where I work at, but I didn't feel like driving that far. I was already on the opposite side of town from where I live to where I work at. I was already on the opposite side of town, and so I did not want to have to drive. It would have taken me, where it takes me um, about 20 to 25 minutes actually to get from my house to outside the mall where I work at. It probably would have taken me about a good 40 minutes to get. Yeah, it probably would have taken me a good 35, 40 minutes, probably upwards of 40 minutes or so to get from the one Hobby Lobby to the other Hobby Lobby. And I was not about to drive that far looking for five or six dollar piece of fabric. I didn't think the cost was really worth it. So, and that was assuming I found it. That was assuming I found any, even one piece. So, um, the next thing I got was on Monday, I got my order in from No Name Needle Minders. And she had had a giveaway about a month or so ago. And I forget what it was that I had won a needle minder or something. I don't even remember, to be honest. Um, but I had to pick out a few. I couldn't just order the one free one. But I got these. And got the Aladdin. Little Mermaid. And then these ladies here. I don't know if you can tell that they're ladies, but they're ladies ladies. I thought they were really pretty. And then dang it. Yeah. Miners always love to stick together. Sorry. I'm adjusting. And then I picked this one out. Little cupcake one as my freebie. Picked the cupcake one out as my, as my prize. And then she sent the little wooden uh, thimble. As a little freebie. So, got those. So, I have a few more minders. I think I have a minder problem, you guys. What y'all think? Um. I also got. And this one was, I was really excited. I actually just went and picked it up this past weekend. Not as past. I actually just went and picked it up yesterday morning because I guess they tried to deliver it on Friday they tried to deliver it on Friday yeah um, so and of course if I'm at work on Friday nobody's here to sign for it so I had to go and pick it up from the post office yesterday but I'm just so happy Back, um, the way this started was, I knew I was signing up for the, the Stitch from Stash, which started July 1st for me. It was the second part of Stitch from Stash. And, but I knew going in, and I think I had commented this, um, or said something about it on Stitch Mania, um, or no, or in the Stitch from Stash group that I knew I was going to end up blowing my budget um, during the uh, Picture This Plus Christmas in July sale. Um, <laughs> he's beautiful. Um, but Stephanie Kine, um, also known as Miss Oso Crafty on Floss 2, she uh, commented that there was a, an LNS 
and this LNS is in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, it's called Neil Craft Corner. Um, and if you're in the Baltimore area, you probably already know. Um, but every year, apparently, and I found this out um, when I was talking to a lady when I was ordering, um, but every year, apparently, for the last several years, they have run a sale throughout the entire month of June um, for 25% off all of their pictures plus fabrics which is the same discount that you get during the one day Christmas and July sale in July. The only difference is to go ahead and order the picture that's plus fabric in June you're not having to wait until September, October to get your fabrics when everybody in the country and possibly outside the country is placing their orders on that one day in July. So you're getting your fabrics a lot earlier. I just got my fabrics this week um, and I had called them, had to have been maybe the third week of June. So yeah, tell me about a month to get it. Um, and they don't actually charge. What they do is they, they put in the order with Picture This Plus and then they receive the fabric. Picture This Plus dyes it and um, sends it to the shop. And then once they once the shop gets it, um, they will actually, that's when they'll charge your card and go ahead and mail your shipment out to you. But it's like, it's like ordering from a shop. Um, and then they have a special order or something. Um, when they get it in, they'll charge you and then send it out to you. So let me show you what I got. You might have to leave. I'm gonna have to put you down or something. You you might have to get without my arm. All right. Yeah, but, but he's gonna get cat hair all over it, so I'm gonna put him down. Okay. Um. The first one. I'm trying to figure out which one I should show first. The first one is actually got... Actually, all the ones that I ordered were for, for specific projects in mind. The first one I got is a half yard of Murmur Ada. You're not going to be able to tell. It's a really nice peachy, peachy almost blush colored fabric. Um, let me see some. Let's see if this helps any. So I'm trying to do my light over here. That's, yeah, that's completely not any better. That's about right, right there, maybe. Yeah, that's about right. It's a nice, like, peachy colored fabric. So, but very lightly modeled. Got a half yard of this, so. And it's, this is the Ada. Um, 16 count, I think I got. Yeah, 16 count. So, and that's only half of it. Got a half a yard of that. And I got this in mind for the um, Cool Beans series, which I think is hands on. Is it hands on design? I don't remember. But I know I got it specifically in mind for the Cool Beans series. Because they have it pictured on like a pinkish fabric. Can't do that. Um, then I got this is a 32 count Belfast and Ale. This is only um, a quarter yard, 18 by 27. And I know when I posted a picture of this in the group. I know when I posted a picture of this in the group. Stitch Mania yesterday morning when I got it 
and I got my package. I said that I think, I, I can't exactly remember what I had gotten this for. Um, I think, I said I, I said that I think I got it for the, um, vintage glassware pattern that's in the just cross stitch but I started thinking and it like it just came to me that I think I actually got this I'll have to go back and check the size of this but I think I actually got this for the crabby all year pattern that I had really intended to start next year and I, and I am going to start it in January um, but I'm going to do it as kind of a self-imposed stitch along. I'm going to do January, in January's, February and February and so on. But, that, I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, I changed my mind. I'm pretty sure that that's what I actually got this for. Was the, um, the Krabby All Year pattern. I'm just going to be putting them in my box. The next pack, the next, um, the next four I actually got as options for my Chatelaine. And if you don't remember the Chatelaine that I'm wanting to start in January, on January 1st, is the Taj Mahal Garden Mandala. Um, and I knew that I wanted to do it on a very deep, rich fabric because if you know anything about Indian textiles, they they love color. They they do a lot of their embroidery, beadwork and stuff. You'll see it on a very deep, rich color, you know. And so I wanted something the same. And I'm actually leaning more toward this. After I got a four, I'm actually leaning more toward this. And when you look at fabrics online. On these little pictures that they have it's sometimes hard to tell um exactly what a fabric is going to look like once you actually have it in your hands so i ordered a few um, as possibilities and this one is the 32 count splash in the belfast <coughs> Sorry. 32 count splash and I love this color. This is a lovely, gorgeous turquoise color. A very bluish turquoise color. I love this. This is the one I'm gearing. I'm I'm gearing more towards. I love this color. I love it. Um. And then. The next color I got, I wasn't sure how it was going to look because I had seen this color. I had on the the picture, even on the Pixages Plus website, it looks different. It looks kind of different, like it looks a little bit lighter. Um, but I remembered seeing a picture, or found a picture online where somebody had posted their Pixages Plus fabric haul that they had gotten and in that picture they listed all the fabrics and in that picture they had shown the uh, Laguna Lagoon sorry it's Lagoon um, and Lagoon actually was darker in her picture than it looked like in the picture on the website so I said let me order a picture of Lagoon and see how it looks in person so I did and it's it's very, very deep aqua, almost emerald green color. It's like, it's like teal and it's like if she mixed aqua and like a regular green, that's what would come out. So it's a very deep aqua, almost emerald green. And I know in here it's showing up as more like emerald green, but it has more of an aqua tint to it. But don't get me wrong, it's a pretty fabric. Um, it's a really pretty fabric. 
but maybe not for the shadowing. So that one. Um, if you can kind of see the difference here. This is Splash and this is Lagoon. And like I said, this one, if, if you can imagine that this one is a very pretty teal color. And this one is going to be more green. Um, and then the next one I got... is another gorgeous, gorgeous color. Um, this is a 32 Belfast in Huntress. Very deep. No, it's not the same color as my shirt. It's very deep burgundy. This one might be the light. Sorry. It's a very deep burgundy color. That's showing about, about right there. Um, but yeah, I, I got this, I didn't, don't, um, don't get me wrong, again, it's another gorgeous color, but just not, because my, my shirt is purple, yeah, this, actually, this is my right, but my shirt is purple, so this is a very deep, um, like a wine color, like a burgundy purple color, so, that'll be used for something else, I have a half yard of that as well, um, I ordered basically a half yard of everything except for the ale um, because I didn't need that big of a size. And then lastly, from Picture This Plus, let's see if this is going to help any. Mm, maybe not really. Um, and then lastly, this is actually a 32 count. Lugana in Mystic. Oh god no. It's a 32 count in Mystic. And this is a very very deep deep blue. Like on the lighter side lighter side of navy. Yeah, something like that. And so yeah. This is actually the Lugana. And if you've ever heard that Lugana dies up lighter than linen, and it's coming out this dark, imagine how dark it is on the linen. But again, gorgeous fabric. Absolutely gorgeous. I've never... Two fabrics, companies, that I will always use under the sea fabrics and picture this plus so and then they were so nice and sent like several freebies they would just sent me i don't want to show this but they sent me that little patriot guy they sent me a nice cute little fruity cake um believe imagine dream it's probably the one I'll, i would end up doing the most um heart and the sun shine and then a little snowman with a top hat so got that from Needlecraft Corner again that's in Baltimore Maryland every year mark your calendars every year um, for the entire month of June they have all their picture this plus fabrics 25% off which again is the same discount that you get during that one day Christmas in July sale that Picture This Plus has. So you have the entire month of June to get your Picture This Plus discount. Um, and you can call them, you can email them. Um, I called and uh, phoned in my order with them. And yeah, got it about a month. And it was funny because I was on my way home and I was like thinking, I was like, okay, my, my car was charged the other day. I should be getting it any time now. And then I got home and found the little post office postcard in the mail saying, we tried to deliver it, 
come pick it up from the post office. So I went yesterday and picked it up. Um, the last thing I got is something that I kind of want to do a review on. I'll turn this off here. Um, I kind of want to do a review on it. I was up early one morning um, because cats and I saw an infomercial and it's funny because I actually saw it again this morning and I saw this infomercial and I'm watching it and it's for some glasses they're called Hazuki magnifying lens glasses it's Hazuki magnifying glasses and so I ordered them and they're not really cheap if you think about it I mean they're not really that cheap they were oh you could do the three payments of $39.95 which added together is almost $120 for some glasses but I'm gonna show you this is what they look like I went to the website and I ordered um, what I wanted <coughs> This is the compact size. They have a larger, they have actually, they actually have two larger sizes. They have a standard size, which I think is about this wide. And then they have the large size, which is almost safety goggle size. So, um, these, um, and then there's kind of, they're, they're purple. They're about the same purple as my shirt. Maybe a little bit darker. But they're a purple metallic actually up here. Um, and this is the 1.6 magnification. Um, they have two magnifications. Um, the 1.6 magnification is good for actually looking at things. It's good for 12 to 15 inches away from you. And, or 12 to 15 inches away from the glasses. And like small work, stitching, um, little fiddly work that you gotta do with your hands. Um, they're really good. And they show them as being really like indestructible. And they show them like putting 200 pound weight. And you see they're, they're pretty like flexible. And of course they show putting 200, 200 pound, two, hundred pound weights on top of them and they're not broken but that's infomercial um and they're really good like i haven't put them on like you said i have i have them on the end of my nose right they're still there like i mean gradually i just shook my head like crazy um but they're still there like you can move they're not going anywhere they're not going anywhere. Um, and I like wearing them like this because looking down at the stitching and then maybe up at the TV, you know, the magnification, look down, you have the magnification and it's all the way all across here. And I like them. I like them. Um, but whether anybody else would want to pay this much for magnifiers, um, and they say that you can use them <clears throat> with glasses, like if you already have glasses. <coughs> Sorry. Um, and they say, like, if you already have glasses, you can wear them with your glasses. And, but I don't wear glasses, so I'm just wearing it to stitch, like, at home. But I might, I'm going to, somebody asked about glare because I mentioned it in the group the other day. Somebody asked about glare, and I have yet to see any glare, like actually looking through the lenses. And I actually put them on, when she asked, I hadn't had really yet had a chance to test them like outside or anything. But, um, but I, I put them on outside and I was looking at something through them. And I really have not found any, any glare in them. So, that's good. So there's no glare. Um, sorry, I hear something outside. I'm always paranoid that, that somebody is going to come up, come to the house, 
especially while I'm doing my videos, it always seems to happen. Um, but yeah, they don't slip, um, and they're good. Oh, um, what I was mentioning, there's a, a they have a lower magnification, um, and they do, they come, they have like a little plastic, um, glasses case that they come in and it comes with the um, cleansing the little cleanser pads little wiping pad um, and the come in lower magnification is uh, like 1.3 percent and they say that's good for like looking at computers um, like if say if you're on a computer all day but you would need that extra magnification to see it a little bit better. Um, they say something like that would be good for working on computers. Um, because they said, I think those said they were like 15 to 18 inches away. So the 1.3 magnification is good for a little bit further away. And they have this, both of them actually have the blue is the blue light blocker it has it has UV um, blocker UV protection and it has blue light protection blue light is what what you get from phones and computers and um, uh, tablets that type of thing um, the the light coming off of it is actually what they call it what they refer to as blue light so um, they both have more. They both have blue light protection, but the lower magnification one that's that's better for looking at computer screens and stuff. It actually has a little bit better blue light protection than the higher magnification one. So either way, um, but like I said, they're not they're not that cheap. They do run about one hundred twenty dollars. You can do the three payments of thirty nine ninety five. Or you can just buy them outright. Um, they do have the the 90 day money back guarantee. Uh, if you don't like it, you can return them within 90 days. But check them out um, if you're looking for something like a magnifier. Um, and I know we're all um, there. There was this thing going around um, a while back where the um, the little jeweler magnifier. Um, but something like that is kind of clunky and heavy um, and these are just these are super lightweight like super lightweight um, and you just slip them on like regular glasses I mean I could wear them up here if I wanted to but you're like really blurry right now um, but yeah you can wear them like that so that you can look down at your stitching and, or your pattern um, and then you can look up to maybe watch TV or at the person you're talking to, you know, stuff like that. Um, but these, they're just like, they're glasses. Um, so, maybe that might be something y'all are interested in. Um, I'm just putting it out there for the world in case somebody else is interested in. Um, but it's Hazuki. Ha the, the name is Hazuki. H-A-Z-U-K-I. Hazuki glasses. Um, I will... I'll post a link to the website in the description in case you want to check them out. Um, <clears throat> it's going to be a really long video, you guys. Something I wanted to do for the last couple of weeks. Something I really wanted to do for the last couple of weeks. And I keep forgetting about it and not mentioning it if you remember we had yeah, we have the 20 random facts tag and where people will tell things about themselves maybe not that are stitchy related um things like you know if they have any tattoos um what their biggest pet peeve is um favorite my favorite foods like I told my favorite food um different things things about their personality 
um, and at the same time, I kind of have some stitchy confessions that I wanted to do. I kind of wanted to give y'all three stitchy confessions about myself, and you can do this if you want to. Um, I'm not going to try to say, it's a tag, everybody do it, um, because those never seem to get around. Um, but I wanted to just give you guys three stitchy confessions about myself. And what this is, is just three things um, about myself that have to do with stitching that maybe not everybody knows. Um, things that may not come up that often. Um, or something that I just wouldn't be forthright in telling somebody. Um, or unless it was asked. So, the first thing is, as you can tell with my picture is plus order. I can agonize for months and months over fabric choice. Um, I bought four fabrics just to have four fabrics to choose from for my shadowing. Um, and I think there was another pattern. My Teresa Wensler uh, Egyptian sampler. I agonized and agonized over that one for a long time. Um, I thought I had wanted to do a hand dyed for it, um, but I wanted something really light. And but at the same time, I couldn't really buy fabric for it at the time. Um, I was trying to conserve money, and so in the end, I just went with the. I think it was this Weigart fabric something like that. But I just went with a, a regular packaged fabric that I found. But I I can agonize for months and months and months over something. And when I say agonize, I generally mean like I literally mean agonize for something. I will go I will go back and forth between fabrics. I will like like this one, no, what about this one? Mm, no. Um, I kinda like that, but do, I do this one what about this one? No, I don't know if I, I don't know about that. Or maybe this one works better. I will, I will go crazy about fabrics for a very long time before I decide on a fabric. Um, so that's why you see, you might see me go back and forth over fabrics for something, and I try not to show it my fabric choices for something until I'm completely set on a fabric. And even then, sometimes I'll, I'll get to the moment and I'm like, I just don't like this fabric. I, I'm switching it out for this. So, that's the first thing about me. That's the biggest thing about me is that I will agonize for months. I will agonize for a very long time over fabric. Um, picking the right fabric. Um, the second thing is I railroad. These are completely off the cuff, by the way. Uh, the second thing is I do still railroad when I have more than two strands. Um, the funny thing is I didn't railroad when I first started making. I didn't know anything about tricks and tips and all the other stuff when I first started making Floss 2 videos. In, and obviously before that in my dark days of stitching. Um, but when I found out what railroading when I found out about railroading, I just, I started, I took to it immediately. I'm like, this is wonderful. My stitches lay so flat and the coverage is better. And so I was, I railroad, I, I still do though. I railroad both legs of each stitch. Sometimes I can get away with not railroading a leg. Um, but 99% of the time I railroad both legs of a stitch. And even when I have three, God forbid, if I have three stitches, three strands, or four strands, um, I will still railroad. Yeah, they get twisted up, but I just keep stitching, I'll keep going. Um, so, and I know that's kind of, might be a kind of a faux pas to somebody, to some people, is that you're not supposed to railroad if you have more than two strands. I don't care, I railroad. Um, and the third thing, this one's going to take a little bit more pulling out of my mind. The 
third thing I guess is I like I not fabric I, I not threads maybe yeah. yeah the third thing I guess would be that I not I'll tie a knot in in the thread in the bottom of the thread well in the the end of the thread and I do this for a couple of reasons um, either it's a dyed floss, a, a variegated floss, that you can't do the loop start in, because yes, I do the loop start. Um, it's a dyed floss that I need two strands, and you can't loop it. So I'll tie a knot in the end, pull it really tight, make sure it doesn't come loose. Um, because I have had that happen before. Um, and then kind of clip near the knot, the end of the excess part of the tail. And then you pull it through, and you pull it back down through. Of course, obviously you have to start from the back. So you pull it up to the front, and back down, and then you loop it through, just like you would a loop start. Um, but I do this for two reasons. One, like I said, either one, it's a variegated floss um, that I can't loop start, that I can't loop it over. Or two, um, I've had to end my thread early in a section or whatever, and so once I tie it off, I cut it, and instead of trying to go through all that crap of, you know, pulling out just the one strand and looping it over again, I will take it, I, I won't do nothing to the needle, I'll just take that thread, pull another knot in it on the end. Um, clip the tail and then pull it up through again in, in the next section. I'll, I'll start it in the next section. So it's good for starting um, the middle of a thread. Like you've had to, you've had to end a thread, the, uh, a length of thread and just tying off what's there um, and continuing on with the same thread in the same position it was in. In another section so that's gonna be my stitchy secrets one I agonize over th over fabric two I railroad more than two strands and three I have knots I will tie a knot on the end of a, a length of thread um, so that's it uh, hopefully I hear others of you guys do the same thing uh, tell us what your stitchy confessions are. You can do one, you can only do one if you want to, or you can do a few, three, four, or five if you want to. Just tell us what your stitchy confessions are. I'd, I'd love to hear them. Um, and if you do videos, comment down below. If you're going to do it, comment down below. And well, if you do it, do the stitchy confession first then comment down below this video and let me know that you did your stitch confession so I can go and watch it. I'm nosy like that. So I guess that's going to be it for everything. Um, I'm still waiting to hear from the third um, Needleminder winner, uh, Linda Craig. Um, Sonia has her minder. Um, The other lady has her uh, minder. Susan Weber, sorry. Um, Sonia has hers. Susan has hers. Um, and I'm still waiting to hear from Linda Craig. I've tried to. Um, I'm at this point. I'm trying to get a hold of her myself um, to let her know that she won because I don't think she's watched that video yet. But it's been almost a couple. It's, it's been almost two weeks since I did it and I'm still trying to get in touch with her so um Linda if you see this message if you see this video please message me um so that I can get you your reminder um but other than that guys that's it um as far as stitchy news um I got an Amazon uh, 
fire stick. Um, loving it. I've been watching Boss Tube this morning uh, on my TV. And um, took the cat to the vet this past Tuesday. I took um, Dean to, to the vet. And they pretty much gave him a clean bill of health. They gave him a few shots since I said it had been that it's probably been a while since he'd been to the vet. They gave him a couple of shots, um, gave him a rabies shot, and then um, we got him on the Advantage Multi, which is good for, oh, come on, which is good for not just flea and ticks, but it also helps with um, keeping out heartworms in cats, which are actually there's no treatment. If a cat gets a heartworm, there's no treatment for it, like there is in dogs. Um, it helps in heartworm prevention. Um, and then, like any outside, like if they say that he say he eats a bug, and it has a parasite in it, um, it'll it'll prevent that parasite from taking hold. Um, in, in his internal so it helps on a couple of different things um, he's got to go to the vet eventually I'm, I was planning on taking him this week but I think I'm gonna have to postpone it for a couple more weeks it's okay I know so that's gonna be it for me for today I know this is an hour, almost hour long video which I have not done a video this long in a while so I had a lot to show I had a lot to show I had a lot to go over so hopefully you guys um, will be okay with this video being as long as it is and um, yeah uh, have a good stitchy week you guys have a blessed week and I will see you guys next time.